How's it going, guys? Ryan here. And today, we're going to be tackling the tricky subject of tone wood. The very popular topic that you've been seen on boards and all over the internet with a bunch of videos with lots of opinions and tests and things like that. So I'm going to try and compile all of that data that's out there into one little kind of comprehensive video and see if we can't figure out if tone wood is actually a thing, whether it affects the tone of your electric guitar, if at all, and if it does, how much, does it really matter? What should you be valuing it as compared to the other things that affect your tone of your guitar? And so um, before I start, I want to make one thing clear. Today we are going to be talking about electric guitars. Because with acoustic guitars, the wood is the actual physical thing making the sound of the guitar. And so the physical makeup of the wood in an acoustic guitar is incredibly important. And so I don't think there's anybody out there that knows anything about acoustic guitars would argue that statement. Today, however, we're going to be talking about electric guitars. And electric guitars are different in a couple different ways that we'll talk about in just a minute. So I just wanted to make sure that we're clear that um, with acoustics, it matters a lot. But today, we're going to be talking about electric guitars. And so before I give you my opinion and what I've concluded from the things that I've researched and found out, um, I think it's best that we start off with a definition of what Tonewood is. If you guys haven't heard of this, um, this topic before. Basically, what a tone wood is, is it is the wood chosen for the creation of an instrument based on the tonal characteristics it will provide. And so the person making the guitar picks a certain kind of wood supposedly to change how the end instrument will sound. And so the popular statement that I can gather from people who discuss this topic is the statement they're discussing is whether the species of wood used in elect the body and parts of the electric guitar noticeably affects the overall sound of the instrument. And there's two different aspects of the sound of the instrument that we'll talk about later. But first, let's kind of take a look at how an electric guitar makes sound in the first place. And this kind of comes from three different aspects of the guitar. So in front of me here, we have this very nice drawing of an electric guitar that I threw together in like two minutes. So, you know, over here you have the neck and you have the strings and you have the pickups and you have all the goody works inside, you know, so it's a guitar. And the three things we're going to be talking about are the pickups and the electronics the playing style, and the strings. These are kind of the three factors that produce, directly change how an electric guitar sounds. And so, first up, we're going to start with pickups. Now, pickups are the things mounted in the body of the guitar. So there's one right here, there's one right here in my amazing drawing. And what they are is they are magnets that pick up the strings' vibrations as they move within the magnetic field of the pickups, and they turn it into AC signal that travels along these wires here and comes out the, the instrument jack right there. Now, to me... As far as that's concerned, is this aspect, it doesn't seem like the wood of the guitar would affect that aspect of the guitar that much. Because all it's doing is it's seeing the string, you know, you pluck it and it wiggles around like that at a certain frequency and resonance. And the pickup here sees that string moving in and out of its magnetic field and reproduces that in a C signal that kind of represents the waveform that would come out of it at the end. And so that part of the guitar doesn't care at all what the body of the guitar is made of. All it's seeing is it's a magnet 
And since the body is wood, it doesn't really care because it's not mag- um, metal, it's not ferrous, so it doesn't have any magnetic field to it. So it doesn't care what the wood is. It could be in a cinder block for all it cares. All it no- cares about is the string that's moving in and out of its magnetic field and reproducing that in AC signal down the line. So that's the pickups. The next part is the playing style. Now your playing style can be different between much play different people. For me, I'm pretty heavy handed when it comes to my guitars. I like to play the crap out of them. To me, I think it may not sound better, but it definitely feels better to play it when you're, you know, strumming like you have a tree trunk for an arm. And so, you know, how you play these strings is definitely going to affect the sound of the guitar because, you know, you play a string lightly or you play it hard or you play it with your fingers or you play it with a pick or, you know, you're fretting it with fingers or you're fretting it with a slide. All these things are going to change, directly change the tone that comes out of the string. And so, as far as the tone wood of the guitar is concerned, you know, I don't see how the wood the body is made out of would affect your playing style. Sure, you know, it could be, you know, a little heavier or maybe the fretboard feels a certain way and so it makes you kind of play a certain way, in which case it may kind of affect the way it sounds, but it's not really directly. It's more affecting the way you then play the guitar because the string isn't actually ever resonating off the fretboard. It, it hits, it makes a pinpoint between the fret and the, the bridge and it changes the scale length and then that produces your note. The fretboard is just something that holds the frets in place and stops your finger from pressing all the way through the neck of the guitar. And so the wood doesn't affect your playing style that much, if at all. And so as far as that aspect is concerned, I don't see how the wood can affect the sound of the guitar in that way either. And so the last part then, last hope for tone wood people, is the strings. Now the strings are actually what creates the energy that is then produced in sound, either acoustically coming directly off of the string that you hear you know, with your ears when you're not plugged in, or coming out of the guitar from the instrument track from the AC signal that the, uh, the pickups receive and then going through an amplifier or through um, uh, an amp sim or your, your interface or whatever. And so this, the wood can affect a little bit. And so, like I said, when a string is played, it makes energy because it takes energy to play the string. You know, if you just let a string sit there with nothing around it, it's not going to do anything. It's just going to sit there being a string doing nothing. When you play the string, you're adding energy to the string from either plucking it or strumming it or whatever you, ha- whatever you do. And that makes the string resonate depending on the scale length and the size and whatever. It changes the sound that this string creates. And this comes out as mechanical energy and the fact that the string is physically moving, you know, up and down and back and forth because of the energy that's been put into it. And then this energy comes out as either acoustic energy, as we talked before, where it then moves the air around it, creating the physical sound. So when you're just strumming electric guitar without it being plugged in, that's the physical sound you're hearing from it just off the strings itself. And there's also the electrical energy that is created whenever this string moves in and out of the magnetic field of the pickups. Like I said before, it creates an AC signal that then comes out. And so the key thing for this is energy. When you put energy onto the string, it resonates and it creates the sound, whether acoustical or mechanically. And whenever anything takes away from this energy, it affects how the string 
well, sound or the sound coming from the string. And so anything touching the string will take away from this energy. And so thinking about when you're playing an electric guitar, what are the things that will be touching a string while it's resonating? And, you know, there's two different states this can be in. There's, you know, whenever you're just playing an open string, the only thing that should really be touching the string is the nut up here and the bridge down here. You know, there's not really much else, you know, unless you have really terrible action and starts buzzing against the frets here or maybe hits the pickups, you know. That will also affect because it'll take energy because it'll hit it and it'll lose some energy that way. But ideally, the only things that be touching the string are the bridge and the nut. And then if you're playing the guitar or, or fretting it, you know, your finger will be, you know, on a fret right here. There's a finger. You can't tell. That's what it is. And basically, then it presses down on the string and makes contact be between one of the frets and the bridge. And that changes the scaling, changing the notes. And so, again, those two things are the only things touching the resonating part of the string, ideally. And so, thinking about that, and how uh, a fancy, scary word called mechanical physics works, um, the more dense an object is, the harder it is to resonate. And so the denser any of these things that are touching the resonating part of the string are, the less energy they steal from the string because the string's trying to get off, the energy's trying to go somewhere. And so the longer it stays in the string, the longer it resonates. And so if it sees, you know, the only place it could go is the bridge or the nut or one of the frets, and it sees that as really, really hard to resonate, it's just not going to bother, and it'll stay on the string and keep resonating until eventually, you know, entropy takes its place, and it'll just kind of slowly die out. Now... The bridge and the nut and the frets are all pretty dense. They're pretty solid, usually made from pretty solid metal, or um, in the case of the nut, uh, it's used to be some plastic or some, um, used to be bone, but now it's like bone uh, uh, substitute or something like that. And these things are usually supposed to be pretty dense, so that way the string makes a nice solid break across it and it keeps a lot of the energy on the string because if these things were able to resonate and start making their own sound. To do that, they have to steal energy off of the string and make it to make themselves resonate in the first place. So that means the end result of the signal going into the pickups in this case will be stolen to make these things resonate and therefore less signal would get created inside the guitar and put out through the instrument jack. So, but in this case, usually these things are pretty solid. And so, but also the other thing that affects this is how dense these objects are also affects how easy it is that they transfer energy from the string to other things they're touching. And that is where the tone wood comes into play here. Because the bridge right here is touching directly the body of the guitar. Depending on what kind of bridge, I kind of drew a, a Les Paul style bridge because that's kind of what I had sitting in front of me. So that's what I copied. And then over here, you know, it's kind of touching the, um, the fretboard and the neck, which is also made of wood in almost every case, I think. And so the denser these things are means less energy they steal from the string but it also means it's easier for them to transfer that energy into something that they are touching. And so the energy goes, oh, okay, I can't go th resonate the bridge because it's too dense. So it kind of treats it as one object. And it's like, oh, but I, maybe I can resonate the wood below it because the bridge is so dense I can't move it, but maybe I can have it move the wood below me. And so... But at the same time, that also, what we applied to the bridge also applies to the tone wood, and that the denser the body of the guitar is, the harder it will be to resonate as well. And so the more energy it'll keep on the string. And so 
in the same side, the more resonant the body is, the more energy that will be stolen off of the string and get thrown into the body in order to make it resonate and make its own sound. And so this is kind of one of the, um, it's not really one of the main arguments of Tonewood, but it's one I've seen thrown around um, that doesn't really make a lot of sense is that some people say, you know, hey, I pick this piece of wood because it really gives like a 1K bump, you know, for my guitars. It really helps to cut through the mix. You know, this kind of wood really helps me cut through the mix like this because it resonates and it adds a sound. And really, it's kind of backwards. Like if the wood's going to resonate at 1K, that means it has to get that energy from somewhere. And so what it's doing is it's going to steal 1K off of the string and use it to resonate itself, which means actually you'd kind of get a dip at 1K and some other things according to harmonics and things like that. And so that argument never really made sense to me. So, um, you know, don't, don't listen to anybody who says that because it doesn't work that way. But in order to be, getting back to the tone wood stuff, in order to be 100% correct, the wood that the body of the guitar is made of, according to things I've researched and things like that, it does affect the overall end tone of the guitar that is produced electrically, so through the pickups and things like that. It does affect it, but it's really, really minor compared to the other aspects, and really what, when it comes to the, the, the statement that we said, said before, in that the species of wood used in electric guitars noticeably affects the overall sound of the instrument. That's the statement we're talking about. The species of the wood doesn't really decide how the guitar sounds. As we said before, what really affects it is how dense the body of the guitar is. And so how dense this part of the guitar is, is going to depend about how much energy gets stolen off of the string and used to make the body resonate instead of the string resonate. And so, yes, some species of wood are generally denser than others. They do overlap quite a bit, especially with newer manufacturing and logging methods that we use because we've kind of used, tried to streamline and speed up the process. Um, for making wood instruments, and so they aren't usually dried or cut down or processed as carefully as they were, you know, years ago. And so that's also affected the way that wood is, you know, cured and processed and things like that. And so it it doesn't really, you know, mahogany today doesn't sound quite the same as mahogany did, you know, a hundred years ago because the way we process it isn't the same as we did a hundred years ago. And so it's still kind of in the same ballpark, but it allows for a lot of variation because it's a lot sloppier nowadays than it was way back then when he had like super special luthiers who, you know, really took a lot of pride in their work and really agonized over, you know, the wood they chose to make instruments, whether it made a difference or not. And so that being said, the statement that, the species of wood used in electric guitars noticeably affects the overall sound of the instrument is at face value false because it's not the species of the wood that has any effect on the overall tone of the guitar. It's the density of the wood that affects the overall tone of the guitar. And so you can have some pieces of ash that sound darker than pieces of mahogany well mahogany in general will probably sound darker than ash you can get some overlap in which you can get you can get a mahogany piece that sounds brighter than a piece of ash and vice versa and with all that goes with every other kind of um wood that can overlap and so but this difference is going to be dwarfed by any changes you make to the three types of aspects we talked about that produce the sound of the electric guitar. And so when we talked about pickups and electronics, we talked about strings, we talked about playing style. Any little change made to any of those three aspects 
is going to do way more to change the tone of the guitar than changing the body or the tone wood of the guitar will. And so, and this has been true for a long time. One thing, I think the reason why this myth has been spread around so much is that A, it came from, you know, acoustic guitars before they were electric guitars, they're acoustic guitars, and that the wood really, really made a difference whenever it came to producing sound from those. And so that was important. But also, um, when gu- electric guitars were really, really young and early, like say back in the, the 50s and 60s, the pickups in them weren't really that good. They were super microphonic. And so they would pick up audio, like acoustic energy from around them, not just the electric energy from the strings. And so if your guitar was super resonant, the pickups would actually pick up that sound from the physical guitar itself resonating. And so it would affect the tone of the guitar. Also because there were, you know, a lot of hollow bodies back then. And so they resonate as well. And so um, those are a whole different kind of uh, ballpark that you can look into if you want to talk about hollow bodies. We're talking about solid body guitars here. And so probably some of that also comes from back then when, yes, the tone of the wood of the electric guitar did affect it because, but it wasn't because of something it was designed to do. It was a flaw in the pickups and that they weren't well designed yet. And so they picked up uh, acoustic energy around them as well. And so you had to make the guitar, you know, as least possible producing acoustic energy so that it wouldn't feed back or squeal and that's why you know Les Pauls were so you know sought after and seen as this really good product is because they were made from a solid dense piece of wood and so they didn't have any it wasn't a hollow bot or anything like that it wasn't an acoustic guitar retrofitted with a pickup or anything it was a solid piece of wood so it resonated a lot less if at all when played and so that's why you get you know like from uh spinal tap where he says the sustain just goes on for days just because it was made les pauls are made of a solid chunk of wood and so all that energy would have a better chance of staying on the string and therefore it would resonate longer it would sound bigger because less of the tone was being sucked away into the body of the guitar and so those are probably some of the facts of why the tone would debate and you hear some you know professional luthiers who are really really good at their job and some you know some other guys who really know their stuff about guitars may help spread this myth of tone wood is because it can be borrowed over from some older things that were true but aren't really true anymore like ever since like we started making better pickups that resonance thing with the bodies hasn't been true in a long time and so with any sort of modern pickups that's not really a factor anymore unless something's gone really really wrong so that's all I wanted to say as regarding Tonewood, you know, kind of compiling all the things I've researched and hopefully spitting them back to you and a thing that's maybe a little bit more comprehensive than scouring the internet for hours and days and trying to make sense of all the different arguments and tests they've done. You can go look up, there's a bunch of different tests on, on YouTube and online of people playing, you know, the exact same setup on a guitar. There's a video of this dude who took... Um, three different pieces he took a, a birch an ash and a mahogany plank all of the same density and size and made an exact same size guitar he didn't cut it he just used the plank of the wood and then matched all the things so all the neck he used and the pickup he used and the strings and the placement was all the same on each one you can listen to it and i'd be i struggled to hear any sort of difference you know closing my eyes and listen to i couldn't tell when he switched to different guitars there's other guys who've done it with spectrum analyzers, a little bit more nerdy way to do it. But, you know, the guitar industry benefits a lot from perpetuating the myth that tone wood affects it because then it can sell nicer woods for more money. And so hopefully being armed with this information, you can now make more informed decisions whenever it comes to, you know, buying guitars or choosing guitars or building guitars if that's what you're into kind of thing. And so really what I wanted to, take you guys take away from this video is that yes the density of the wood put into an electric guitar does affect the tone but value the tone wood with what it can actually change you know don't value it more than you know a good set of pickups correctly placed or you know some nice electronics inside or some a good set of strings 
you know, or, pl- or good playing technique. Tone wood can't change more than any of those factors can. So if you've got all those factors nailed down and they're actually the best they can be, then sure, you know, why not go ahead and try and get a better piece of wood? But all those different things are probably, you can make better improvements to a guitar for less money by changing those aspects than changing the wood of guitar well. So that's all I had for today. I hope you guys learned something. Um, now you guys can go out and act like your pros in the tone wood debate and go ahead and, and st- strike down all those naysayers and myth believers. So I hope you guys have a good day. Go out and make some awesome music with any guitar you want because now you guys know that wood doesn't make that much of a difference. This is Ryan making another video for Farrington Studios. See you guys next time. Bye.